Hey guys, we're up to the last type of answer type in today's lesson, and that answer type is analogies and assumptions. It's the A in the diva, okay? Now, we are gonna cover this in detail today, but just to let you know, it's kind of a rare type of question. It'll come up once in every two or three tests, but I need to cover it because if I don't cover it, you know, we wouldn't have looked at all the different types of answer choices, okay? So analogies and assumptions, they're two different types of answer choices. Let's take a look here. Analogies and assumptions. Here's a brief passage. Um, go ahead and press pause and read it to yourself. And when you're done, we'll look at the question. Okay, so you know you may not know what the Fermi paradox is, but uh, no, no fear, do, never fear. It doesn't matter for this particular question. The question asks, which assumption does the Fermi paradox depend on? So, how do I answer this question? What does it want me to do? The first thing we need to do is understand what the Fermi paradox is. It's some kind of idea or argument, okay? Now, once I know what that idea or argument is, I need to know which of these answer choices must be true. Must be true in order for the Fermi paradox to be true. That's what an assumption means. It means that you assume that this statement is true in order for the following argument, to be, following argument to be true, okay? So let's take a look. What is the Fermi paradox? Now, I'll briefly cover this paragraph. I mean, it does say human beings have only had science for a few hundred years, and we're already in space. And in a few hundred more years, we should be colonizing the stars. That's the background. And then it says Fermi's argument is that it's highly unlikely that other civilizations, other alien civilizations, would discover science at exactly the same time we did, right? A few, a few hundred years ago. What are the chances? What are the chances in a 15 billion year universe that every other civilization would have discovered technology just 300 years ago? So that's unlikely. Now it says, had they acquired science even a thousand years earlier than we, earlier than we did, they'd they, they would now be so much more advanced, right? Because think about it, He's saying that in 300 more years, we're probably going to be in the stars. So if you took another thousand years, wouldn't other alien civilizations be, you know, going all over the galaxy or all over the universe? That's the argument. But which of these has to be true in order for that argument to be true? So let's recap. Let's kind of regroup our thoughts. The argument is that since alien civilizations probably didn't discover technology at the same time as us. If they had even discovered technology a thousand years before us, let alone a million or a billion years before us, then they would have been so advanced that they'd already be here on Earth. That was the argument. Let's check A. Does this need to be true? Extraterrestrial civilization may not wish to be discovered by human beings. Could be true. Certainly possible. And if you read the passage, it's something that may have tricked you because the passage was about um, why aliens are not visible on Earth. But as you can see, when we're looking at the details themselves, and I've cut out the rest of the passage, it just looks like a crazy answer, right? It's like, that's got nothing to do with anything. And that's how I want you to think always, right? Look at the part of the te text you're supposed to be looking at. Clearly identify that. It's crazy. It's irrelevant and cross it off. Let's check B. Does B need to be true in order for the paradox to be true? Extraterrestrial civilizations would most likely have discovered technology at about the same time human beings discovered it. Now, that is opposite to what the passage said. The passage actually said the paradox considers it highly unlikely they would have, that they would have discovered technology at the same time as us. So that's what we call an opposite answer. Right? If you read it carefully, you can see that it's opposite. Now, these answer choices can be dangerous because the opposite answer choices often have so many words that are similar to what I'm looking for that your eye thinks, oh, that kind of looks right. But if you read it carefully, you can see that it's saying the exact opposite of what you want, right? So read the lines carefully. That's the opposite of what we want. Okay, let's go look at C. Extraterrestrial technology would develop at roughly the same rate 
as human technology. Must this be true in order for the paradox to be true? Remember, the paradox was, if aliens had even discovered technology a thousand years before us, it would already be so advanced. Because human technology has advanced so much in 300 years. So C seems to be a correct assumption. We're saying here that if aliens developed at the same speed as humans, which is super fast, just 300 years, then they would have been way more advanced than us a thousand years, um, you know, with just a thousand years ahead start on us. So clearly, we need this to be true, for the paradox to be true. To think about it in reverse, imagine the opposite. What if they developed technology way slower than us, right? Um, if they took a million years to even go from you know, the wheel to uh, what comes after the wheel, we're still using the wheel. Let's say it took them a million years to go from uh, fires and torches to matches or something like that, okay? So if it took them that long, maybe it is conceivable that aliens exist in the universe and they're just taking a really long time to develop, right? That would break the paradox, right? So if C is not true, then the Fermi paradox is not true. Hence, we are depending on this as an assumption. We need this to be true for the paradox to be true. Okay, so C looks good. Let's double check D. Extraterrestrial civilizations would inevitably use technology for aggressive ends. Totally and utterly irrelevant. Aggressive, what are we talking about here? It's not even mentioned. So D is wrong. C must be the answer. It was a little bit challenging, right? Assumption questions can be challenging because they, re they rely on logic. And, you know, don't panic if you're struggling with it. You'll get it with a bit more practice. But the good news is, remember, there's probably not more than one question you'll encounter like that in the test. Okay, next passage. Again, please feel free to read it. Pause it if you need to. But in this particular case, it doesn't even matter. The question is really based on just the last sentence. Which of the following most resembles the relationship between black hole activity and star formation, as described in the passage? Now, this is an analogy. Which of these answer choices is similar, most resembles, is analogous to that relationship? So my first step will be to really understand what this relationship is. Black hole activity versus star formation, question mark. What's the relationship? So it has come as a surprise over the past decade that black hole activity is closely intertwined with star formation, it says star formation here, but it is star formation, I assure you, uh, occurring farther out in the galaxy, okay? So the idea here, is, of course, is that black hole activity, closely linked to star formation, that's far away. Ladies and gentlemen, read these four choices. Think to yourself, which of these describes the relationship between one thing causing and being very closely linked to the creation of the other thing that's far away. Pause if you need to. Think about it. Okay, I trust that you've thought about it. This is, again, is a question that many people get wrong. But A says there's this thing, this black hole activity, this eruption somewhere, which causes rainfall, some kind of formation, rain formation far away on another continent. A looks pretty good to me, but who knows, there could be a better answer. I'm gonna park it for now. B says, industrial emissions, that's my black hole activity, right? In one region, lead to an increase in airborne pollutants. Yeah, okay, I guess that could be formation of pollutants. In adjacent regions, well, hang on, adjacent means next to, so that's not farther out in the galaxy, is it? So I'm gonna cross that off as no good due to the word adjacent, remember. One word makes it wrong. C. Decreased oil production in one country. Okay, that's my black hole activity. Results in higher gas prices in oil-dependent countries. Oh, it's a little confusing, right? This black hole activity is creating something, but it's not creating any formation. It's changing the price, right? So that doesn't seem to really be any kind of formation. Furthermore, it's not farther away. It just says in oil-dependent countries. That could be the country itself. It could be the next-door country. 
It could be the country on the other side of the world, but it doesn't force it. It doesn't say that it must be. So that's not the answer. So, so last question, last answer, answer choice. Overfishing in the Gulf, there's my bicol activity, leads to an increase in the population of smaller aquatic organisms. I guess that's, more my, that's my star formation, right? But it doesn't mention farther away. In fact, it's within that gulf itself. So again, that part is not the answer. So A must be the answer. To review, for the analogies, try to link every part of the passage text, what is being described, to the thing that's being compared, the analogous situation. They have to match up as closely as possible. Often they're not perfect, but the answer choice that has the most connections is going to be the right one. Okay? So to review, we're done, guys. We're done with the answer choices now. That's it. You've done the most important part of this course. But for analogies and assumptions, think for an assumption. What must be true? What must be true in order for the statement to be true? Not what can be, what has to be true. For analogies, really connect each part of the answer choice to the passage. Is there star formation? Is there black hole activity? Is it farther out in the galaxy? Connect all those things. All right, great job, guys. You finished the answer types. Next, we're going to go into the reading skills to learn how to read and break down the passages. And then after that, we'll go into the questions. And then you're done with all the lessons, and you just need to practice. And you can do that uh, through Field Academy.